became my Lord. And I just want to read this last page. It's a four-page essay that I got an A+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want you to notice all the I, the myself, the me, and it's dripping with pride, mm -hmm. it's dripping with arrogance. It's the me, myself, and I, triune, God, goddess. Mm -hmm. See? Okay. So this is the last page. I was about to set on a six-month um, backpacking trip. Uh, I was, and, and I did go to the Cook Islands. I went to Fiji, New Zealand, Easter Island, Chile, and Peru. It started February 16, 2000, no, yeah, yeah, 2003. And, I, and God is so funny, because I was looking to find myself, myself. It's about, it was about self-realization, and God's humor is that he led me on this wonderful God Ventures goose trip, and it brought me all the way back to Mid Midway Baptist for Christ realization. So I was looking, looking, looking for Merlin, but God gave me Jesus. Okay, so this is my essay. Um, all these destinations will bring me exciting challenges. As a female solo traveler, I prefer to get off the beaten tourist path. This is my method of madness for self-discovery. Herbert Otto wrote, change and growth take place when a person has risked himself and dares to become involved in experimenting with his own life. Now that is um, new age, so-called spirituality, when it's all about self, okay. It sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds really good. Adventure travel allows me to risk the safety of my comfortable cocoon, to burst a bubble of old self-defeating beliefs, to face imagined fears, to go through them, transforming them into usable wisdom for future challenges. <coughs> and as I read this again just a couple days ago, this wisdom, it's not wisdom at all. The only wisdom that I know is real wisdom is from his word. Yes. Okay. Um, the reason for this life-changing decision, which at that time was going through another divorce, and this is where the selfishness comes in. Um, so this life-changing decision, not just the traveling, but the divorce, is that I do not want any regrets as I gasp for my last breath. I know of older people who are fearing the end and are wishing they had lived their lives differently. I want to look back at my own life and feel peaceful satisfaction that I have done my utmost to realize my dreams, that I did not hold back on living in the present, that I was vigorously shaken, not merely stirred. Now see again, this peaceful satisfaction, there's no such thing, because to me now, 2016, compared to 2012, 2002, the only peace comes from God himself and knowing him. Amen. That's the true peace that I now own. Okay, I have no desire to mold myself into the Western ideal of success by living outside the box, undaunted by the many challenges ahead, financial juggling, self-knowing. Um, and I agree with Will Rogers' idea of going out on a limb because that's where the fruit is. What fruit? No, don't I'm in that. Because, excuse me, I am nervous. The true fruit is from the Holy Spirit. That's the only fruit that lasts. This fruit that I was looking for, it was self-satisfaction. It, it was not lasting at all. The only fruit that counts is from the Holy Spirit. It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, truthfulness, um, gentleness, faithfulness, forbearance, self-control, which, of course, I didn't have. I want to experience as many life-changing moments as I can using travel as a conduit for inner growth and self-discovery. And again, this inner growth and self-discovery, it's like <coughs> I was laughing at myself, at my thinking, because the only growth and discovery is what the Holy Spirit 
reveals to me. That's it. So all this stuff, I mean, 2002, okay, I didn't know Christ. This was BC, so just remember. Okay, um, and so Bob Dylan, and, and look at all the people that I'm quoting from. Mm -hmm. Bob Dylan. <laughs> he said, he who isn't busy being born is busy dying. This born, born word. He who isn't born again is busy dying. Okay, so Bob Dylan, I just misquoted you. Okay. Um, so here I am, I'm thinking, my decision for divorce and traveling was, in my own eyes, legitimate and valid. And um, I was in this relationship marriage for six years, and I wrote, six years is long enough time for two people to live unhappily and not realize that even with true love in a, in a relationship, it does not necessarily translate to a lifetime partnership. <laughs> because tomorrow may not come, once you not delay on realizing a heartfelt dream. Most importantly, once you die in peace without regrets. Now, again, this lifetime partnership, because I have been a failure in a relationship, especially in marriage. And I'm in a marriage now, so if you remember the Samaritan woman at the well that Jesus talked to, I think she had five. I'm not quite there, and this is my last one, because it's a covenant with God. And maybe it wasn't so much a covenant with my husband then, because it was really a messed up um, wedding ceremony, but I knew that it was a covenant with God. And no matter everything that happened, <coughs> I'm sticking to the word that I gave to God. Okay. Amen. And again, this thing of realizing a heartfelt dream. What is the heart? The heart. See, again, I'm thinking of self, myself. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is a deceitful, wait, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I didn't know my heart. I certainly didn't label it wicked but it was desperately, desperately wicked. And again, Matthew 12, 34, um, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yep. And sometimes, yes, that mouth still speaks. Okay, okay, so again, I'm quoting uh, Khalil Gibran. Believing is one thing, doing another. Many talk like the sea, but their lives are stagnant marshes. Others raise their heads above the mountaintops, while their souls cling to the dark walls of caves. When I went to um, Peru, I did a three-day um, trek to Machu Picchu. So yes, I was on the mountaintops, but I didn't know that my soul was so in a dark place, and I was <clears throat> clinging to the walls of caves, and that's um, a Khalil Gibran. And then, then my very last line, I say, oh, life is short. Play naked now. <laughs> see, see, it's like, yes, oh, life is short. And this thing about playing naked, take that out. <laughs> now, it's like, no, what I meant was um, be transparent. Don't hold anything back. But now, to me, being transparent is being truthful, being honest to the nth degree, and this thing now is to love, give, serve, now. Okay, now, my name 